Welcome, welcome everyone. Uh, we are on the Call of the Wild campaign call to save America's wolves. So if you love wolves, you are in the right place. Um, it's really great to see so many familiar names of folks who have joined. Um, and those incredible photos of you and all the inspiring action that you have already taken around the country. Um, and for those of you who are new tonight, who haven't been part of the campaign up to this point, welcome. We are so excited to have you uh, join the forces for Wolves. So my name is Valerie Love. I'm the Deputy Organizing Director with Ignite Change, uh, which is the grassroots organizing force of the Center for Biological Diversity. We're dedicated to defending our wildlife and our wild lands. Um, and since January, we have been spearheading this campaign to stop the Trump administration's attack on wolves. So I'm on the call tonight with my esteemed colleague, Colette. Uh, so first I'll pass it to her to introduce herself and tell us a little more about why we're here. Thanks, Valerie. So my name's Colette Adkins. I'm the Carnivore Conservation Director at the Center for Biological Diversity. I'm in the Endangered Species Program. And I've been working for almost a decade to protect wolves. Here at the Center, our campaign, our Call the Wild campaign, launched in January. And we've been working hard to challenge the Trump plan to prematurely remove wolf protections. Our big focus has been gathering these handwritten comment cards with a deadline of May 14th. But we were surprised by a last minute announcement that we'd have 60 more days to continue to gather comments. So now we have more time to create the largest response ever in support of wolves. So today on this call, we're going to start by just reviewing what we've done so far and celebrating that fantastic success that we've had. Give you a little bit more detail about that recent news of the comment period extension and then share our plan for what we're going to do with this extra time. Then at the end of the call, we'll have some time for questions and the call will, the webinar will take about an hour. But before we dive into the nuts and bolts, Valerie's I uh, would like to share our community guidelines and go over some tips for using this technology. Great. Um, there we go. Here they are. So here are the community guidelines just for tonight's webinar, but it infuses our larger work as well. So we aspire to create a space that is inclusive. So although all of us share the same love for wolves, um, that doesn't mean that we come from the same backgrounds or have the same opinions. So please just be mindful of that and um, be welcoming to all while conversing in the chat tonight. Um, goes right along with that respect. So just treat each other with respect and dignity. Uh, we also have kids that are part of this campaign. Um, I've met kids who like have pulled their parents into the campaign and um, have their, their whole family behind them or have been going out to their schools and getting uh, other kids involved too. So um, along with that and just creating a kind of respectful environment, we ask that you refrain from using, you know, vulgar language or just inappropriate um, or, you know, explicit language. Uh, and then relevant. So this webinar will only be an hour long and we have a lot to cover. So just keep that in mind with the questions you ask or, you know, the conversation in the chat. Let's keep it focused on the task at hand um, and make the most of our time together. Um, and, and finally, I want to say we also we, we follow the HEMES principles, um, which are environmental justice principles, and they're really about creating inclusive um, inclusive and bottom-up organizing spaces. So we do aspire to those as well. I think Harrison is sharing them in the chat if you want to check them out more. Uh, okay, so with that, notes on tech. Many of you have already found the chat box, so that's a great place to just converse and, um, you know, say hi and uh, as we're on the call. So if you haven't found it yet, um, as you look at your screen, you should see at the bottom of it, um, you may need to hover at the bottom and there's a little chat icon that you can press and that will uh, 
open up the window for the chat. Um, along with that, there is a Q&A button that you see down there. That is a better place for questions. You will notice the chat gets very busy, a big flurry of activity. Um, and I will also say, if the chat is very distracting for you, you know, only use the chat to the extent it is helpful. Um, but the Q&A is the better place to put questions that you would like us to address um, because things tend to get lost in the chat. Um, that said, we, we typically have a lot of questions and we won't be able to get to all of them, but we will try to uh, do our best to answer as many as we can. Uh, if you called in, so if you're not on the Zoom app on your computer or your phone, you won't see these features, but it's all good. We will make sure that, um, you know, you're, you get everything that you need through just the audio. Um, all right, I think that covers it for tech. Um, so let's dive dive in um, and start with our accomplishments to date. For those of you saw, who saw the slideshow, that's kind of a visual representation of some of what has happened. Um, but as many of you know, we started organizing to protect wolves before Fish and Wildlife even had the chance to publicly announce its plan to strip protections. We knew it was coming and we got ahead of the curve uh, and we're glad that we did because we have already broken records for the biggest grassroots response for wolves ever. So together since January, we have collectively met with 19 representatives to lobby for wolves. Um, and that's actually a lot because in-district meetings are not easy to get. We've hosted more than 130 meetups across the country. So many of you on the call, um, helped us get there. We've made more than 4,000 phone calls uh, to legislators and the White House. We've, uh, and then this is probably our biggest monumental achievement, is that more than 750 volunteers on this call and not, just like you across the country, gathered more than 35,000 hand-signed comments, physical comment letters, uh, against the Trump administration's plan to strip Endangered Species Act protections from wolves. So that means 35,000 people have had one-on-one, face-to-face -on -one, -face conversations about how important it is to protect wolves. Face-to-face um, -face conversations have been shown to be the most effective way to change hearts and minds. So the ripple effects of those conversations also go far be beyond um, the letters alone. Um, and then all together uh, with our allies, we've also been collecting comments digitally and we have now broken, we're over a million comments digitally uh, and we're not stopping there. So it's pretty huge what we've been able to accomplish together. And um, so give yourselves a big round of applause. It's amazing. And this is a perfect example of just what happens when we put all of our people power together to protect wolves. Uh, but obviously we're not done yet. Uh, so I'm gonna pass it over to Colette to talk more about the recent news of our the comment extension and where we go from here. Well, thanks Valerie. Well, just a little bit of background first. I do I know we have some new people on the call. So the Trump proposal came out in March. That's from the Fish and Wildlife Service. And what that proposal does is uh, announce a plan to remove federal protections under the Endangered Species Act from wolves across the country. The only wolves that would be spared are those in the southwestern United States. They're separately listed as Mexican wolves and then uh, the red wolves that are in the east. What's wrong with this is that we've got so much more work to do before wolf recovery is complete. Now, there once were almost two million wolves. They were found across most of the lower 48. Now we have maybe six, 7,000 wolves, and almost all of them are in just a few core populations, like in the Great Lakes region, the Northern Rocky Mountains. We've got a uh, 
a struggling population in the Pacific Northwest that's just starting its recovery. And there's huge regions where we don't have wolf populations at all, like in the Northeast or the, the Southern Rocky Mountains. So we want wolves to stay protected so that recovery can continue in places where we, where we don't have enough wolves. And in those places where wolves have already made good progress towards recovery, we don't want to turn their management over to states that have proven hostile to wolves that would open up hunting and trapping seasons. So the Fish and Wildlife Service opened up this comment period, like we said, um, originally planned to have it end on May 14th. On that very day in the Federal Register, the Fish and Wildlife Service announced a 60-day extension to that comment period. And now the official deadline is July 15th. Now that's good news. That means we've got more time to keep up this great work. Another piece of good news is that the Fish and Wildlife Service said that they will be holding at least one official public hearing. But unfortunately, we don't have any details about that yet. So every day I check the Federal Register to see if the Fish and Wildlife Service has posted its announcement, but no word yet. But somewhere across the country, there'll be a, an official public hearing where people can um, provide um, in-person oral testimony uh, against, the, against the proposal. So besides having additional time to get more comment letters, this extension is in itself a minor victory to celebrate because that means wolves are gonna stay protected for at least 60 more days than they were going to before. And that difference is actually kind of big in terms of timing. So what we thought before is that the final rule, now that's if Trump goes forward with the final rule, despite our efforts, and I'm still hopeful that we'll be able to get them to abandon this proposal. But let's say it goes forward under the timeline that we've seen with other rules. It'd be about a year to go through all the comments and then issue the final rule. So we were expecting the rule to come out uh, in spring of 2020. But now it won't come out until summer of 2020. That would make it a lot more difficult for states that plan to open wolf hunting and trapping seasons to get their act together to have a hunt that fall of 2020. So by this extension, we may have actually averted the first uh, season of wolf hunting and trapping. In addition, we've bypassed the spring 2020 season where a lot of wolves would have been killed under state management to, um, in response to conflicts with livestock because that's the calving season. So, uh, you know, we just have to take every little victory we can and the fact that we've got it pushed back for, six, for 60 more days was absolutely in response to the huge public outcry and the, you know, thousands and thousands of comments the Fish and Wildlife Service saw on the regulations.gov webpage. So that's because of our action that we've got this proposal at least delayed. Now, one thing that we're going to see in the next few weeks here is a release of the peer reviewer comments. So all listing decisions are to be based on best available science. These aren't decisions that can be made on economics or based on you know, political preferences, even though we know that sometimes and too often that happens. They're supposed to be made out of based on science. So that's why the Fish and Wildlife Service is required to send its proposal to some of the top wolf experts across the country. And those uh, peer review comment letters are going to be released in early June. At least that's what we've heard from Fish and Wildlife Service. Now I'm excited to see that because several years ago, back in 2013, when the Fish and Wildlife Service first proposed a nationwide delisting, the peer reviewers were unanimous in you know, severely um, damning that proposal as premature. And ultimately, the Fish and Wildlife Service didn't go forward with it back in 2013. And we're hoping the same thing happens this time. So keep an eye out. We'll definitely be running a press release and let you guys know when those peer review comments come out. So I think what we're up now is that we've got to keep ourselves fired up for the next couple months um, with our eye on that July 15th comment uh, deadline. Uh, back to you, Valerie. All right. So we've slowed them down, but of course, we're not going to stop till the proposal is stopped for good. 
Um, and as of today, we have 54 days left before the end of the comment period. Um, mm -hmm. And like I've said, we've already shattered records. Um, we've already gotten more comments to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service than uh, they've received for any endangered species issue. And we're not gonna stop. We're gonna dial it up even further. So many of you have been familiar with this timeline. We've shared it on webinars before. Um, and for those of you who are new, you can see that we've been busy. So not only have we been gathering comments, we started, again, before this was even announced in January because we knew it was coming. Um, we had a call-in day to the White House. We requested public hearings and an extension, I might add. Um, and uh, we lobbied representatives. We held public hearing, well, they didn't have actually any public hearings. So, we're gonna protest them, we will when they do, um, and we're glad that they're at least gonna schedule one, which still seems absurdly low. But uh, we held our own community-led hearings in Sacramento, in Portland, and in Denver. Um, we had a big comment delivery in DC. I was just there last week, so that was supposed to be the, the culmination and the end of the whole comment period, and of course, the day before they announced this extension, which is great, but we didn't want to let that take away our momentum. So we went through with this uh, rally and comment delivery in DC. We had um, Representative Don Byer speak at that, and uh, and he's the one that co that co-authored a congressional letter against this proposal. So he's kind of leading the charge against it in Congress. Uh, so a lot has happened and y'all have been part of that and it's been an incredible journey. So what does it look like from here? Um, we really just have this short sprint to up our game in terms of gathering as many comments as we can. So that's going to be our focus for the next, you know, 54 days. Uh, and we've upped our goals to match. So if you've been with us from the beginning, you know that our original goal was 15,000 hand signed, hand gathered letters. We smashed that goal, we doubled it, um, and we more than doubled it to 35,000. So now our new goal is 50,000. And I think that is very achievable for this um, incredible network of people that has achieved so much. Um, and then on the digital comments, we've gotten together with our allies, over a million. We, we already delivered nearly a million of them. And um, I think we're actually around 1.2 million that we've gathered. So our new goal for that is 1.5 million. So that is where we're headed. Um, and so there are three main ways that you can get involved right now, depending on where you are in the campaign. So one of the most important things you can do is help us gather comments against the delisting, um, as many of you have. And this can involve asking friends and family members to sign, uh, bringing letters, bringing the letters to meetings uh, of groups that you're a part of, or hosting your own event. Um, you'll hear other tips, but being in front of the grocery store, going to the farmer's market. There are lots of strategies to gather these comments. So I would love to invite um, Aaron Hauge, one of our volunteers who has gathered a lot of comments and become a leader in her community, just to tell us a little bit more about her experience. Erin? Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Woohoo! Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I, so I'm Erin Haugey. I'm based in Sacramento, and um, we have an awesome Sacramento team wolf. We've got some really motivated folks, and um, they, we're, we're sort of a small but mighty team. <laughs> and we collected about 700 letters for the May 14 deadline. And um, just a few quick tips. Um, I would say that uh, consistent recruiting efforts for your team is really important. So maybe plan to have a couple of sort of low-key rendezvous meetings where everyone gathers and you talk about uh, maybe calendar a couple of events and um, 
kind of figure out who likes to do what, if there's some strong writers, if there's some good PR people, figure out some strengths and then uh, go from there. And then as you're tabling, also, if you find people who are interested, be sure to get their emails and add them to your network list. And, and it, it grows in that way. Um, and then for tabling and outreach events, sort of uh, know your audience, kind of think about where you're going. I know uh, Valerie mentioned grocery stores. We, we were in front of Whole Foods, and we thought we were going to clean up with that. Um, but it, it was funny because people were super focused on groceries. <laughs> and they had a lot of times they had kids in tow. And so we, we got... We got some letters signed, but not as fruitful as, um, for instance, the, the local state university campus. Uh, we, we just got oodles and oodles of letters signed there that was very successful. Um, a couple of libraries, local libraries, very successful in collecting letters. We did local events, so if you have any events happening in your community, um, nature-oriented or just in, in any sort of a social gathering type event, um, contact whoever's organizing those and see if you can table. Um, and then have a table. I would recommend to it, maybe go to a thrift store and get a, a card table, something that's a uh, low price, but have a table as a focal point and then spread a blanket over and have your materials from Ignite Change. And then we use visuals. So we've got our little wolf stuffies and, um, People really like them. They'll come up to the table and say, are those for sale? And we'll say, no, they're part of the pack, but you can sign this letter. So it's a great way to engage. And then one of our um, strong team volunteers, Annette, created this really beautiful, um, you, you can see this, right, you guys? Can, can everybody see? Because. No, oh, you, you can't can. see. Oh, I thought my, my camera was on. Oh, well, sorry. That's the little green lights going. Oh, shoot. That's okay. I don't know how to make it. I'm sorry, you guys. Well, so there's this really cool wolf bucket that Annette painted wolves on and then put some um, stickers in. So there's some kids' activities, uh, coloring pages we use. And it's all low-cost stuff. You just can download images like black and white off the internet and print out 25 or so and take a, a box of crayons and, and you've got some kid entertainment. And then um, draw people in by standing in, in front of the table if you can and have your clipboard in hand and, you know, sign to protect America's wolves. It's just a, a short draw in. And then if you get attention, you know, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service wants to take wolves off the endangered species list. We can't let it happen. And, and <laughs> you know, it's sort of Barker style so that you get people going, what, what, what's going on? And, and a lot of times um, you'll get those signatures. And then um, have a realistic letter goal. This is really fun. If you say, like, for, if you're going to table for an hour, say, okay, let's, let's get 30 letters. Set it realistically. And then when you beat it, you'll be like, wow, we did great today. <laughs> and I usually have about four clipboards loaded with letters so that our team can be multi getting multi signers out in, in front of the table. And then um, sort of a no brainer, just a cautionary, you know, don't debate or get drawn into politics. People are like, you know, I thought wolves were, weren't endangered or, you know, what, why are you picking on Trump? And um, I don't mean to do the voice. I'm sorry, but anyway, <laughs> um, and just say, well, you know, we're here, we're here for wolves today. And would you like to sign this letter? A lot of times people will sign and sometimes they won't. And then you just say, thank you. Have a nice day and let them go on their way. And then always have clear asks. So um, we find that once we get someone in to sign a letter, we can often give them a little, like a half sheet. We've got a couple, some half sheets that we give out that list, you know, sign the federal register before July 15, uh, contact your congressional representative and um, ask them to, to oppose delisting, um, submit letters to the editor, and of course, sign up at saveourwolves.org. And then uh, just another point here, and I'll finish up. Um, you want to follow up with your team and always follow up with your team because that's what keeps y'all engaged and feeling a sense of, um, of teamwork. So it can just be something very, very short, just a quick little summary of a tabling event. You know, list who showed up if you had five people, list their names, say how many letters you got, say any, you know, fun bits that, that uh, happened during the, the, the gathering. And then um, list a calendar event of things like if there's an upcoming ignite change webinar if you've got another tabling event in mind um, get that on the calendar so that people 
feel like, oh yeah, I want to do that, and and they'll get it on their calendars. It, it's it's really effective, and our team has just been real strong in that way. So. Um, Lastly, I just want to say have fun, you know, just have fun out there. Uh, it's really an opportunity to, to hone our skills and, and also to engage with the public about an issue that, we, that we're really passionate about. So it's a really great time to, to get out there and, um, and do our thing and, and have a few laughs. So th thank you very much. And sorry my camera wasn't on. I thought it was. So. Well, good. Thank you so much, Erin, for... Um... <laughs> giving us those lessons learned and tips and ideas um, and for all the incredible work that you're doing. So that's a great example of um, not just how to collect comments, but how to build a team, um, how to step up as a, as a leader to, to really take your organizing to the next level where you are. Um, I will just say, if you are not there or you're not ready to, um, you know, build a team and lead a team, which I think many, more of you are ready now. But uh, you can also do it like on your own. I've seen other people just take comments with them wherever they go, get friends and family to sign, um, get, you know, talk to people as you're in line at the grocery store, or um, it really, it happens. And, uh, or to events that you go to. So there are lots of different strategies, but that's a really strong example of, of kind of um, taking your, your team to the next level. And if you are disconnected and you're like, I'd love to, but I don't know anyone here, a great step that you can do is put a event, like a tabling event on our Ignite Change map, and we will actually invite Ignite Change members in your area to join you. So, all right, with that, um, so if you would like to join Aaron and many others in continuing or starting to collect comments in your community, uh, you can fill out the form that we're putting in the chat right now. And that's to request um, a packet. So we will mail you a packet of 100 blank comment cards and some basic outreach materials. Um, and don't worry if you're on the phone, you can always fill it out uh, after, we'll email the link. But if you can access the chat, please check it out right now. And maybe Harrison can um, share it a few times uh, just so it's right at the front of the chat. And uh, we will mail you 100 blank comment cards. Uh, what else do I wanna say? Oh yeah, and don't forget there's a little confirmation process. So you fill out the form and then expect an email in your inbox and you need to confirm it in your email before we actually mail you the material. So don't forget that step. And one final thing to note about the comment cards, um, some of you may have leftovers from last time. So in that case, you can use those and just keep going. We did make a couple little tweaks to the comment cards. Um, they're now addressed to Secretary Bernhardt, but that's just because he got confirmed in the meantime in that position. And it actually doesn't matter who it's addressed to in the chain of command. Um, it's all gonna be submitted under this proposal and it'll all count. So um, keep going. We don't wanna waste paper, but do order more if you need more um, or if you're joining the effort for the first time. Okay, number two way that you can get involved. So this is folks who have already been collecting comment cards and you're ready to take uh, your, your engagement to the next level and become a leader. So for you, we would love to have you become a mentor for new comment collectors. Um, and this means that we would give you a list of folks who are new to the campaign uh, and you would just call them and offer support, lessons learned, ideas. You do not have to be an expert. Um, you just have to be um, somewhat successful in your efforts and willing and up to the task. So several of our mentors are on the call tonight and um, we'd love to have more of you. So I will now invite Matt Francis, who is one of our mentors, to share a little of his experience with y'all. Thank you, Valerie. So I'm Matt Francis. I'm calling from New York, where I got in last night to install a telescope. And first of all, I just want to thank Erin because her presentation was really good. And 
Valerie, I definitely want a recording of this just so I can uh, make a note of a lot of those ideas. Going to a college campus was a, a great idea to get. They're so full of energy, intellectual energy, that certainly that's a positive place to collect comments. So um, yes. <clears throat> since September of 2018, I've had a singular intent on ending killing contests in Arizona, but it was wolf advocacy that got me there in the first place. Getting the Ignite Change comment cards filled out didn't really seem all that hard. It was a combination of handing out smaller stacks of cards to like-minded friends to get filled out at work. Um, I emailed everyone in my email box asking permission to fill out cards for them. And taking the rest to an Earth Day event um, all added up to around three, well, somewhere between 280 and 320 cards uh, filled out for me. Um, the mentoring thing, I feel weird being called a mentor because I don't feel any different than I did the first day I started. Uh, really doing something to help wildlife. I think like everyone in this meeting, I just wanted to help and seeing others send emojis on Facebook in response to the horrific cruelty being visited upon our wildlife just wasn't enough. Um, so along the way, I've met so many intelligent, compassionate, and absolutely committed people that not only amaze me, we have all become friends, and those friendships have encouraged my desire to be part of something good, something that will move our society and biosphere to a happier, more benevolent place. Um, these friendships feel different than any other. They're, they're friendships forged by a deep empathy and compassion and understanding about what is happening to our world. The relationships are not just about working for the same employer or having a few common interests. They are more complex and profound. Um, you know how it is when you want or need to do something, but there is that voice inside you that whispers, wouldn't it just be easier to stay put? It could, it could be just getting out of bed in the morning or maybe running a marathon. But so many times there have been thoughts that it would just be so much easier to just not go there. Well, it wasn't exactly like that with my 20 mentor calls, but I certainly procrastinated at first. Um, and I was at Sedona Wolf Week when I decided to just call all 20 of them. So I went out to my car and what I found out pretty quickly is that nobody was gonna answer their phone to a phone number they didn't, you know, they didn't recognize. So thank robocallers for that. So I switched to texting and got a way better response. Uh, some people even responded by calling me back within the same hour. Um, and finally, a few days later, I emailed the rest who didn't respond. And of the 20, there ended up being two that were able to become a lot more active. Um, the other 18 had varying degrees of activity, and I don't blame them, them at all. We, we all have lives to live and personal struggles to deal with. Um, I think all of them wanted to help. One of the two is so active, I really can't say I'm mentoring her at all. She is a very passionate, dedicated person, so much so that we have asked her to join our month, our, our weekly Monday meeting uh, wildlife killing conferences, um, in which she has. And I guess I just want to say that advocacy and being an activist is like that. You, you just make the calls and you keep putting one foot in front of the other. And you keep trying. And if something doesn't work, you just move on to the next. All right. Thank you so, so much, Matt. It's been incredible having you on the mentor team. And our whole mentor team is incredible. So, um, and, and Matt really spoke to this, the essence of it, which is building relationships. So building relationships with fellow comment gatherers, with fellow people who care about wolves, um, who care about biological diversity and, you know, this fabric of life itself, like there is a deep um, core passion that connects us. So uh, if you are a current comment gatherer, you've been relatively, you know, if you feel like you have some tips and ideas, you don't have to be an expert at all, but you're interested in being a mentor to others and, you know, to really just building those relationships. Um, we're going to launch a poll in a second. So please, if you're interested, interested, say yes. Um, and if you're new to this, don't worry about it. You can say no or skip it. Um, and hopefully you'll hear from one of these people and, um, and build a relationship as well. Okay. 
I'll just wait another minute for people to have a chance to respond. Again, if you're calling in, you won't see this poll, but um, please like follow up if you are interested. Our email address is ignite at biologicaldiversity.org. Ignite, like ignite change at biologicaldiversity.org. You can always get in touch with us there. Um, okay. And there is one more thing that we could really use your help with, um, and that's to make sure that we build this movement as big as we possibly can for the long-term fight. We've already more than doubled, as you said, our original goal for comment letters, which is incredible. Um, but now we have so many letters um, and we need to get these folks into our system as soon as possible so we can invite them into the next step of the campaign. Um, so some of you on the call tonight may have been someone who signed a letter and then got into our system and got invited to join. Um, so this is a great task for folks who are already gathering comments who want to do more or for those of you who maybe you want to help, um, but maybe you have mobility challenges. Uh, it's hard to, you know, get out there and leave the house, do the on the ground in person work. Uh, maybe you live in very rural areas where just kind of face to face organizing is just more difficult. Um, and it's so important. So data entry volunteers have already entered thousands of names and um, many are on the call tonight. Uh, so we would love to invite you to help us do some data entry. And one of our volunteers who has been total rock star in this is on the call tonight. So Carol, would you like to say a few words about what that's been like? Sure, are you able to hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Great. Um, it's really wonderful to be here this evening. It's I'm in Southern California where there's been a snowstorm today, unbelievably, up in the mountains. You don't picture that in Southern California, but it's going on. And um, it's really good to be on the call with so many people who are interested and passionate about um, protecting wolves and protecting the environment in general. And um, I started actually, I've been, I love the Center for Biological Diversity and I started working as a volunteer on the texting team about a year ago. And that was a really great introduction to the, um, the, the efforts and the energy of working together with a group of people who love, um, love taking action and seeing what that action can do. Both the people on the team and also the people that were texting really, really um, inspired me. And recent, more recently, I joined the data entry team. And um, Valerie gave a bunch of great examples of reasons that you might want to join the data entry team. I have another one. If you're an introvert like me, <laughs> it's a great way to not have to go out and ask people for comments, but you can still be incredibly useful. And, um, and um, it's also really inspiring to do it. What, what happens is that, you know, we have these 35,000 comments and we're hoping for at least 15,000 more that need to be um, gathered and entered and um, it's contact information. So that lets us reach out to all these people, these thousands of people across the country who might wanna be involved. Doing data entry at first, I didn't wanna do it at first because I thought it might be a little bit dull, but it turns out to be really, um, really satisfying because you get to read comments from people. Like I read a comment from someone today who was quoting Gandhi um, and using that to justify why we should, we should save wolves. And you get to read comments from kids and do all sorts of, you also get to be a puzzle solver because you sometimes have to read challenging writing. But the most, um, most inspiring thing for me about it is that I get to see how many thousands of people really are um, interested in protecting wolves and willing to stand up for them. And that's, that gives me hope. It gives me hope for the future, both for our campaign and for other ones too. Um, and doing it's pretty easy. I can do it any time of day or night. Um, I can do it wherever I have my laptop. And I can also do it um, when I hear bad environmental news. It's really satisfying to have something I can go and do directly and immediately and feel like I'm being useful and productive. I read recently that um, just 3.5, just three and a half percent 
of the population taking committed and focused action is enough to create societal change. And I figure by doing data entry, um, we're helping to gather that three and a half percent together and and bring them into action and bring them into a, a group of people that um, in those times when things can look kind of bleak, we get to support each other and, um, and help each other keep going and keep that, that ac activity and energy up. So I, it'd be great to have you join us and, and help us gather those thousands more um, into the fold, into the pack. Thanks so much. Thank you, Carol. <laughs> You can tell we have just an amazing group of people involved in this campaign. Um, thank you, Carol, so much. And thank just everyone for uh, creating this wolf pack. Uh, okay, so if you are interested in joining Carol and others on the data entry team, we'll launch a poll again. So it should pop up on your screen. There it is. Um, and if you're interested, just say yes, if it's not your thing. You can skip it by or say no. Um, but thank you, everyone who contributes to this in all sorts of different ways. Um, and if you sign up to volunteer on any of these asks, we will be in touch tomorrow just with like more details of what's the next step. Um, how can you plug in? So do expect to hear from us. Uh, and again, if you're on the phone, we will, we will do a follow-up um, more focused on the first ask, the comment gathering, but if you're inter we're interested in one of these other asks, just reply back or email us and we'll plug you in. Okay. All right, great. So let's move on to the question and answer portion. And there, as usual, are a lot of questions. So I'm gonna to try to um, hopefully hit as many as we can and uh, maybe ones that are uh, applicable to many. So let's start with a few around the delisting proposal itself and the process and the issue, and then we'll uh, answer some questions about taking action. So let's see, is the content, hmm, this one says, is the content of the letter signed by wolf biologists available for others to read? And Colette, I'm not positive if that is the um, peer review aspect you were talking about or the scientist sign on letter that we've done. So maybe you can just answer both. Right, so, um, so the peer review comment letters will be public, but they're not yet. That's what we're waiting for. It should come out in a couple weeks. The scientist sign-on letter, I think, has already been submitted. I'm not 100% sure about that. Maybe with the extension that got held off. But um, we, it will be public, but I'm not sure if it is yet. Sorry, Valerie. OK. Well, good. Um, OK, so someone said, I. <laughs> I don't know that I have the perfect answer to this one, but have the comments that were delivered to U.S. Fish and Wildlife last week in Washington been incorporated into the Federal Register? I'm asking because last week there were about 73,000 comments on the website, and today there are 6,036, um, sorry, uh, 636,000, much bigger number, uh, comments. So I actually didn't know that. You're ahead of me in knowing what the Federal Register says. We did deliver um, over a million digital comments and those 35,000 boxes and I just like followed up and confirmed with them like you did receive and you're processing the boxes of hand <laughs> comments, right? Uh, and they do have them. They have not processed the letters yet which um, part of this is great because it's going to take them a while and this is all like, let's slow this thing down as much as we can. Um, but I assume that that huge boost in the number in the Federal Register is from uh, all the comments that we delivered last week. Um, there is a related question to this that, um, where is that one? It's about how they count comments so uh, 
the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is a little weird in how they officially like present the number of comments. Uh, and I don't know, Colette, if you want to speak to this more, I can take a stab at it. But yeah, well, why don't you take a stab and I'll fill in. Okay. Well, basically, they have this little article that says they will only count. Um, arguments that contain scientific references to support the argument. Uh, so they, they do not necessarily, in their official count that they make public, count every single tally of people who say, yeah, I'm just opposed to this because I love wolves. Um, we think that's bogus, but it's part of the process. It's usually in there in all of their proposals. Uh, so the final tally that they put out is not necessarily our tally. That's why we also keep our own tally because we think it's really important to put the message out there to media, to other decision makers, to Congress members, like, no, actually one point, hopefully five, at this point, over a million people oppose it. Um, so that's why just, just so you know, there's sometimes a discrepancy in those numbers, but that's also why we keep our own tally to put out to um, and use, put out to the media and use in our messaging. Did I capture it right, Colette? Yeah, that's my understanding too. And I mean, it is important to understand that the Endangered Species Act requires that the decision be based on science. So really the fact that the public is you know, terribly opposed to the proposal shouldn't actually be the deciding factor. It should be based on whether wolves are actually recovered or not based on the science. But what we know is that these are people with value sets that are making these decisions based on their values and the values of the American people. So certainly these have value um, to persuade the decision makers, but in terms of their official decision making, there's gonna be a little bit of a difference there. And I know that I've noticed in other uh, rulemakings that we've been involved in, that sometimes if uh, you know, there's a lot of comments that are absolutely identical, the agency might just count it as sort of like a tally of one, even though there was like 25,000 that said the exact same thing. But as long as you know, we know how many that actually was and we publicize it, then it really doesn't make any difference what the official tally is on their end. Yeah. So this little battle happens every time, but it is essential as to both, like we have scientists co submitting technical comments and we wanna like pack their, their comments with all of the, the arguments that we can um, to jam this up and tell them why it shouldn't go forward based on the science, but showing the mass support is always a huge deal because the science is never separate from the politics. So it all really, really matters. Okay. Um, next, let's see, let's do a couple on taking action here. Um, ah, this one's easy. So when should we expect to receive new comment card packets? Um, if, if you filled it out tonight, it should be in the mail either Friday or Monday, and then take a couple days to arrive. So we will basically turn it around as soon as we can. And, um, you know, generally we say, maybe expect it to arrive within a week of when you request it. Um, but there you go, that's the <laughs> approximate timeline. Uh, basically, as soon as we can get it out to you. Um, can we gather comments in state parks? Are they considered public property like sidewalks? Gosh, I hope I know the answer to this one. Colette, do you? Yeah, you definitely can. Okay. I've, I've heard, I feel like I've heard sometimes they ask you to be in some designated spot. Um, so. <laughs> if you need to respect whatever, you know, if you run into an official that tells you to do something, it's not worth getting into a fight with anybody about it, you know, just go where they want yeah. to go. But yeah, I mean, you've got definitely, it's a public space and you've got a First Amendment right to be out there gathering comments, no doubt. Great. Okay. Um, okay, here's one. So given the time investment in gathering physical comments, is it really more valuable to gather online comments? Um, 
and should we be encouraging people to submit comments through the government website uh, or online? So this is where it's like, it all matters, right? Like we're trying to get that big flashy number of 1.5 million. So whatever you can do to get us there is amazing. Um, but we also really believe in the on the ground face-to-face -face conversations that again, face-to-face -face conversations have been shown to be most effective in changing hearts and minds in activating people. So in this digital age, like we don't want to lose that just <laughs> kind of quintessential organizing in person element, grassroots, you know, volunteer led. Uh, so there are a lot of organizations working on this issue right now. And primarily, all of them are working on getting that big digital total. But our unique role, like no one else is really doing this. So Ignite Change and Center for Biological Diversity are leading the way on this, you know, boots on the ground, people powered, bottom up, face-to-face um, -face organizing. So we think that that's really valuable for building the kind of long-term political power um, and educating people on wolves for the long term. So yes, all of it's important, please do everything. But um, yeah, I guess we're just making a case to, to do the, the, the sometimes harder, but really meaningful work on the ground. Um, okay, do, 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 let's see what else. Um, will LTEs work at all with this situation? I'd say yes, but Colette, do you want to say anything on that? Yeah, definitely. And I see Matt nodding his head there as well. I mean, really, this is so much about a, showing the public outrage about this proposal. That's ultimately how, you know, big decision makers are influenced by any kind of showing of public outrage, whether it's through letters to the editor, you know, op-eds, these handwritten comments, this huge number, like Valerie said, the most ever in Endangered Species Act history, um, you know, more than a million. So these all just tally up together to show that there's huge public outrage and and, and getting other people uh, aware of the issue through, you know, LTA is a great way to reach a lot of people. Um, so yeah, if you can get one published, that'd be fantastic. Okay, someone is asking if, is there an appeals process if the decision goes the wrong way? So we built the biggest mass response to any endangered species issue already. We've done that. We're going to shatter all the records. What if that doesn't stop them? What happens then? Let I know you know this this part very well. <laughs> yeah, so that's the you know I'm a senior attorney at the center. I've been involved in numerous legal battles involving wolves. My very first case that I worked on when I was still in law school was about keeping wolves protected in the Great Lakes, and the center and a, actually a huge coalition, I'm sure of other environmental groups, we will join together and we'll file a lawsuit that challenges this rule as soon as it comes out. But the goal right now is to prevent that final rule from ever being published by convincing the Fish and Wildlife Service and the Trump administration that it doesn't have public support and that it's illegal. So um, our lawyers have already submitted very detailed legal comments explaining why if they try this again, we're gonna win in court. And then you folks are playing that important role of showing them that there's no support for it on the ground. So both of these strategies together, I think are the way we're gonna succeed. Excellent. So glad we have lawyers working hard on this. Um, yeah, as you may know the center. The center is known for our hard-hitting litigation. And so we employ this multi-pronged strategy of organizing science, policy, and litigation. Okay. Um, hmm. We just have time for maybe one more question here. Uh, <laughs> I love this one. Just how do I get to be featured on a webinar? Um, <laughs> there are so many. I would just say there are so many people probably on this call right now that I wish we could have featured because 
um, so many of you are doing incredible, incredible work out there. And, you know, Matt, Aaron, Carol, thank you so much for being on and for representing just, you know, the tip of the iceberg of what's happening out there. Um, we want to hear your stories. We want to share your stories. Um, so at some point, you know, we may reach out to you if you're just kicking butt out there to be on a webinar, but we hope that you know that we really see and acknowledge all of you. And um, another way is like, send us your photos. You may have seen a, the slideshow in the beginning. We just, that's another way that we can share the stories of what's happening out there. Um, and on social media, we, we wanna write like some media articles or we have a medium um, kind of blog site. We would love to feature you in lots of different ways. So please send us your stories and your photos. We keep kicking butt. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, thank you. So let's see, we will wrap this up. Um, oh, there is just one more thing that I wanted to um, tell you about, which is if you're not already on Slack, that's our like online community. It's basically, if you could use the chat tool tonight, it's more or less that simple. It's pretty intuitive. So if you're not already on Slack, that's a great way just to stay connected with both advocates across the country. Uh, Harrison is sharing that link in the chat right now so you can sign up. Um, and we are going to end with our customary howl. So I think Harrison, we're going to wait just a couple minutes while Harrison unmutes as many of you as possible and uh, definitely like click unmute if you can on your screen because we're going to end in a group powerful howl together. So in just a few seconds, he has to do it one by one kind of on a silly system, but please unmute yourself and I will start it off. I hope you join me. Are you ready? Colette, come on. Keep it up. Welcome to everyone who's new. You're part of the pack now. Um, thank you so much, and we will be in touch very soon. Have a wonderful night. Bye. 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 Bye.